Welcome to Life Work with Maya. My name is Arjun and I produce this show. And if you've been listening as long as I have, you will remember a few summers ago that Maya recorded a summer reset for August. And this was shared over the entire month of August, focused on being really intentional. And I have been unintentionally taking a summer reset and Maya has intentionally been taking one. And so I thought it quite fitting to bring you that same series as a mini series released over two weeks. So we'll be doing two episodes a week, which which means we can share some really popular episodes towards the back end of August, uh, the real MVPs of the podcast so far. But hopefully this mini series has you set up for a great August by the time it's done. Enjoy. This is Life Work with Maya, where we talk about success on your terms and tune in to work and lives that feel spacious, abundant and aligned with who we truly are. Hello and welcome to episode two of the August Reset. We're now into August and so I wonder if you have already noticed a change of pace. Perhaps you're away, perhaps you're having a staycation and perhaps you're noticing already that things are starting to slow down for you. I very much hope so. Just a refresher on why we want to have a reset and why I am advocating really good switch off and rejuvenation over this period. I think it can be really easy to neglect the rest and rejuvenation part of our lives, particularly when we are motivated, ambitious, we have goals, we're hardworking. And so just to remember that actually really high quality rejuvenation, recovery and rest aids performance longer term. It can stave off, prevent stress and burnout. It can enrich us with new insights. It can help us to redirect our ship and refocus. Um, So there are loads of benefits, but if you want to think of it in a sort of as I said last time, in an efficiency context, it's really important. And as we continue otherwise to just run and run on our treadmills, we can start to get narrow in our vision. We can start to lose sight of some of the things that are important to us. So the rest and rejuvenation is so critical. And I just wanted to reemphasize that because I think it can be easy to see the messaging, you know, it's time to switch off, have some time to disconnect, all of those things. The reality is, and I tried this a couple of weeks ago, the reality is initially it can be really hard to fully switch off. Uh, You might notice some signs in yourself. For example, I was on holiday and I had some really good quality time to myself. And I found myself wanting to go back to my to-do list and just sort of check check back on things because clearly my brain was still really wired. And it took a bit of time and it actually took me not just trying to sit there and relax, but actually actively doing other things to get me into a bit more of a holiday mode. And it made me think that sometimes we emphasize switching off and we don't necessarily provide ourselves or line up the things that we're going to fill that time with, which actually can really provide the switch off. So what what I want to help us think through today is what are the activities that we can switch on in order to switch off? So in my case, for example, I do like my meditation app and I've also got a meditation headband and that has been gathering a bit of dust in recent months because it's a little bit fiddly. It just takes that extra bit of thought, but actually that's something I can switch on in the month of August. I can switch on the headband. It's sort of a Bluetooth thing and I can make use of it. And I know that when I do do that, it really does help me to rewire my brain. So that's a little example. In my case, also drawing. So if I find myself on holiday or if I find myself in that sort of environment where it's a nice opportunity to relax, I do like to take out a any kind of a notebook and do a sketch. And that also helps me to slow my brain down, gives me something to do. It really encourages me to look at my environment, really take it in, appreciate it. And so for me, that's also in my toolkit of things. So what I'm asking you to think about here is what are the things that you can actually switch on this month? What are the things that are going to really accelerate you in the end in switching off? Um, Again, for me, 
holding a physical book and reading it, it slows my brain down. Initially, I, I often struggle actually to concentrate on the pages. Um, and so what I've got hopefully with my kids this summer is we're calling it a reading hour where I don't know if we're going to make it to the full hour, but it's a bit of quiet time where we all sit with a book. And so for me, that is really nice because it means that they're reading and often actually before bedtime, we don't necessarily read as much as we should. And so I've made that hopefully earlier in the day that we get a bit of reading time in, it's relaxing and it just provides a sort of a cognitive shift where you're forcing yourself to slow down and concentrate on what's on the page. So these are some examples and I encourage you to think about what those are for you. It may well be sporting activities, things that often, I guess, one of the measures or one of the ways of determining whether it is a switch on activity is can is it aligned with flow? So to clarify this, because I was talking to a client about this a couple of weeks ago, who put his hand up and said, I don't switch off, I never switch off. And so what we talked about was a flow activity is one which provides you with some feedback. So actually reading is not a flow activity because you, you're you consuming and you might be doing it at, at a different pace from perhaps screen-based work. But you're not actually getting any immediate feedback. Whereas drawing you are because you sort of see what's coming out on the page and then you respond to that in your mark making. Um, similarly, something like barefoot running, you would get feedback from the ground. You wouldn't, normal running or normal walking alone probably does not qualify as a flow activity because it doesn't engage all different senses and your cognitive capacities. So, Maybe one way of thinking about it is where you can multitask activities is unlikely to be a flow activity. Where you cannot multitask, it's more likely that it's going to be a flow activity. It's not cut and dry because I'm not sure that you can read a book whilst doing other things. But it's just to get you thinking about what are those activities that you emerge from and really feel like you have not thought about your daily to-do list. And I just encourage you to rediscover those this week and let me know what, what you come across and if that works for you. I think it can accelerate the switching off process and it can stop us from getting frustrated or stop us thinking that we don't know how to switch off. We do, it's just for some of us, it needs to be a more active process. So I hope that was helpful and please do let me know if you manage to rediscover one of your flow activities, perhaps it's a childhood activity that you always enjoyed, a little bit like my drawing activity, could be some kind of a cooking thing, could be just, you know, as simple as making, you know, a smoothie. Uh, but whatever it is, I think this is a great month to reacquaint yourself with it and in the process, get some of those relaxation benefits that come from cognitively switching off. Thank you so much. And I look forward to connecting with you next time for the middle of our August reset journey. Thank you for listening to Life Work with Maya. If you've got to this point, I'm guessing you found it valuable. So do share the link with somebody else who can benefit. In an age of materialism and us trying to stay on top of clutter, what could be nicer than to send a non-clutter digital link to somebody and say, I listened to this and I thought you might love it. What a great way to show your care and consideration for them. If you haven't left a review, now is the time and make sure that you are subscribed on Spotify or you're following along on Apple Podcasts. And if you really want to help the show grow then do share the link on ig stories instagram stories or reshare or discuss your thoughts with my linkedin posts you can find me on linkedin and instagram do you feel free to send me messages there i love having dialogue with my listeners um, and the links to those handles are in the show notes thanks for listening and i look forward to connecting with you next time bye-bye